Hello everyone, Shinto Bean here, and in this video I will be talking about some of the big changes coming up in the next season of Warhammer Combat Cards. This is uh, mid-March 2021. I'm looking at the developer blog, and I'll be talking about some of the Warlord and Bodyguard changes, as well as the new trait that will be dropping. So first of all, in the blog they kind of talk about some of the reasoning behind the changes that they make. They talk about uh, the win rates and the, the pick rates of different warlords. Inquisitor Greyfax is the newest warlord, is unsurprisingly done very well. Her win rate is the highest of anyone, and that's definitely way too strong for a new warlord. So they're going to be toning her down in this next season. Let's look at the changes. Uh, so uh, currently, her her special rule allows for uh, up to 80% bonus damage. Uh, it's 4% buff for every 5 unused deck points, and that is going to be changed to a maximum of 75% uh, with a 3% buff for every 5 uh, unused deck points, so just slightly weaker overall. Um, currently, you needed to you have uh, 100 unused points uh, in order to get the 80% buff, but uh, now you, uh, starting next week, you'll need to have 125 uh, unused points in order to get the 75% buff. So it's actually a pretty big change. If you've been holding off on playing Greyfax, um, just be aware that she will be a lot weaker next season. So you might want to get some games in now. Um, I think she'll still be plenty strong and fun to play as, just not quite as ridiculously OP as she has been. Psionic Blast as the most recent trait uh, to enter the game is also getting... it also actually already got changed. They didn't notice it until uh, they had already made the change. It used to trigger at the start of each player's turn. Now it will only be starting uh, triggering at the start of your turn. And it's dealing double damage now. So it, it triggers twice... Or, uh, it triggers half as often but deals twice as much damage. So same amount of damage overall. I think this is a good change because um, it was a little confusing, like which psionic blast should trigger first if there were um, psychers on both sides. And now it just you don't have to look at the animation quite as much. Uh, it's not quite as good at taking out shields, but uh, on the other hand, uh, berserkers will not be benefiting as much from psionic blast. So I think that's a good change to psionic uh, blast. Now looking at the bodyguard changes. They've made a number of changes to some of the less popular bodyguards and a few minor nerfs to some of the stronger ones. Uh, the Wraith Fighter is just getting a two point increase, so that's a slight nerf. Uh, this guy here, the Phoenix Lord of the Dark Reapers, I don't think this guy is very is used very much. I think partly because he's just a very rare card. Um, I have him in my, in my collection, but I haven't used him. He's getting a slight uh, buff. We've got the Harlequin Jet Bike. It's a decent card, but I just really dislike the look of the model, so I refuse to use it. Uh, the Jukari Incubi is getting his trait swapped to Fear from Furious Charge, and then the Harlequin player, I don't really use that bodyguard at all. Necrons also, they're getting uh, a few of their just less used bodyguards, um, just slightly better stats. Uh, or a minor increase in cost for the Hexmark Destroyer. I don't think I'll really use any of those, uh, even with their buff. Now for Tau, Long Strike, the legendary uh, gunship, is getting a slight nerf, but only five uh, less damage, so it's not really much uh, of note. The Crude Shaper is always, is a funny card, I think, because okay, this is like a Crude who is not wearing any armor. And for some reason, he has more health than almost any uh, battle suit. It just seems really weird. I, I know that they're trying to, you know, make him actually useful, but it's just weird to me that a crude has that much health. And uh, you got the stealth battle suit and recon drone. I just don't really use those at all. For servants of the emperor, more units that I don't use. The uh, imperial robot uh, it has. Uh, a decent ranged attack and um, regeneration. Now we got the Death Rider and the Rattling Twins. So, 
yeah. Um, Space Marines also. Uh, the, the Dread Knight. Now this is a, actually an interesting change. Now, this thing used to have a Psychic Link, but it is getting swapped to Big Game Hunter. So uh, previously the Dread Knight had to be paired up with other Psychers for it to be the most effective. Now it's going to be a little more flexible. You could perhaps use it with uh, Index, with, with Warlords other than uh, Grandmaster Voldus. Marnius Kalgar is getting a boost to his melee. Uh, he is just one of many expensive Space Marine cards that have a strong melee attack, so... Um, I don't know if this will be enough to make him truly useful. Uh, we'll see. Tor Garadon, I thought that this guy was actually quite good for his stats already. He's seen buffs in the past, um, but I guess he's maybe just a kind of an awkward unit that doesn't really deal enough damage to really fit in with... Um, to, to be a popular choice for... Um, the Warlord, so... But yeah, he's gonna be quite good for his stats. Uh, Chaplain Mores, this guy is not that great, so he deserves a bit of a buff, I think. And these other Space Marines down here, I got the Lieutenants, uh, Blade Guard Veteran, uh, I don't really use any of those guys. The Aggressor I did used to use uh, with um, Lieutenant Tolmeron. It's a decent ranged unit with Barrage, so it's getting a slight buff, and the Deathwing Knight is one of the few Space Marines with Taunt, so a little extra health is helpful. Uh, for Chaos, Celesque is a very strong card at the higher levels. Uh, I haven't actually used it as much as I was thinking I would, but it is getting a slight nerf uh, increase to its cost there. And for Oryx, this is actually a really huge change. Boss Zagstruck is getting his trait changed from Big Game Hunter to Scout, which means with his special rule, he will immediately get to attack for 100% um, of his melee damage. And he does a lot of damage, so this is really huge. Uh, he was already very strong, one of the best. Uh, he has one of the best special rules in the game. He's going to be even stronger now. Uh, Gubbins, this guy... Also got buffed in the past, he's getting a little bit stronger, decent ranged unit. Spookums is pretty good with uh, boss Nickrot. Uh, these other two are uh, not really that great, just very weak bodyguards with not much use. Four Tyranids, uh, they've just buffed a number of the less popular units. The newer Rope um, is a Psyker. I suppose if you're going with a Psychic build for Tyranids, it might that uh, be pretty strong. Biovore is a decent ranged unit. Uh, these others I don't really uh, see used very much. The Venom Throat, Metamorph, and Gargoyle. So yeah, that's it for the changes to bodyguards and such. Now let's get to the good stuff. Let's look at the new trait. Uh, it is called Death Blow, and it is an AoE attack um, centered around uh, the melee attack type. So, what it does. When the unit is destroyed, it will get an extra attack uh, dealing at the first tier 80% uh, of its damage uh, to the main target and 15% to adjacent enemy cards. So it's an AoE attack that triggers when uh, the card dies. So this looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to use and it will take some timing and coordination to, to get the most out of it. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they've added this one into the game. And they've given it to quite a few bodyguards. Let's look at which ones are getting it. For Eldar, the Wraith Lord, uh, which I have never really used. That's uh, a pretty big, bulky uh, unit. So that will be getting Death Blow. The Solitaire. Now this one has had its trait changed a number of times. Uh, started out with Furious Charge. Then it was given Fear, I think. Then it was switched to Big Game Hunter, and, and now it'll be getting Death Blow. But I think the Solitaire will be one of the best cards to get it. It's kind of a glass cannon. Doesn't have a whole lot of health, but very high melee. So it will die and then deal massive damage. And then the Howling Banshee Exarch, uh, it had Fear, but it will be getting uh, this Death Blow. So I think... The Avatar, Fury of the Craft World, will be very fun to use with Death Blow. Uh, you'll be able to get 
massive damage in. And that was one of the weaknesses with the Avatar in the past, was that when your units die, uh, they lose all of their buffs. But if you use these units with it, uh, you will be able to still get one additional attack in when they die. For Necrons, uh, the Tomb Stalker is going to be getting it. That's a very expensive bodyguard. Uh, it had Big Game Hunter in the past. And then the uh, Canoptic Wraith, that is just a cheap melee unit that I, I don't really see used very much. Servants of the Emperor, the Penitent Engine will be getting a Death Blow instead of Furious Charge. So that's a pretty significant change. And then two very cheap uh, bodyguards. Um, I think it will be, I mean, it's a decent trait for a, a cheap unit. And I suppose with Greyfax, uh, it could potentially uh, de be dealing more damage as well. Uh, for Space Marines, I'm not really sure about this. Uh, the Redemptor is getting uh, its trait switched from Big Game Hunter to Death Blow. And then Mephiston, interesting choice. Uh, he is a strong Psyker, but he also has a pretty good melee attack when upgraded. And then just a couple of weaker units here, the Wolfen. Deathwing Terminator and Blood Claw. Uh, for Chaos, the Bloodthirster. Um, a lot of these units had Big Game Hunter. They're getting switched to Death Blow. And then the Blood Letter, that's a very cheap, weak um, demon. I'm curious to see if uh, this actually counts as a melee attack. I'm thinking it won't. Uh, it would be kind of fun, though, if uh, it could uh, combo with uh, Skull Taker and could take out like three enemies in one hit with it. I don't think that's going to happen, but wishful thinking. And then for orcs, uh, the Death Dread, this is the Bad Wounds, the yellow one. Uh, it's getting switched from Furious Charge to Death Blow. And then finally for Tyranids, the Moloch, a very powerful melee uh, monster, and then the Carnifex, which had Taunt. Uh, this is going to be a much better option, I think. Now the one issue I'm noticing here is that a lot of these bodyguards that are getting it, um, you know, you got like the Carnifex, Moloch, the Death Dread, the Bloodthirster, the Redemptor Dreadnought, and uh, up here the the uh, Tomb Stalker for the Necrons, and then the the Wraith Lord. All of these guys have a huge amount of health, and what I'm concerned about is that a lot of the time these units don't actually die in the game. They can make it until the end of the unit, and sometimes, like, you know, they survive. They're still on the field when your Warlord is dead. So, uh, if they are, if they do not get destroyed, they will get nothing out of the Death Blow trait. Uh, it, it'll be as if they have no trait at all. So, you do might have to actually take extra care to ensure that they die so that you can get all that extra damage in. So, I, I suppose that adds a, another layer of strategy, but... Yeah, let me know what you think of this new trait and the units that are getting it. It will be interesting to play around with, and I'll definitely be doing a video on it uh, once it is released next week. So, uh, that is it. There's quite a few uh, interesting changes coming up uh, this next season. Uh, let me know what you think of them. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.